Hey there, this is John Sankey from Devil You Know, and you are listening to Collision on Voice FM. Well, I'm speaking to you for Devil You Know today, and everything right. I've read says you're based in LA now, but obviously you're in Australia at the moment. I am, yeah. I'm uh, I'm having myself a little vacation, getting away from the metal. Well, I'm trying to, but that doesn't seem to ever work. <laughs> I'm surprised at how Australian you still sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I grew up out in the country in Queensland, about four hours west of Brisbane. Yeah, this is where I was born and grew up and everything. So my family still lives here. So, uh, yeah, I'm out here at the moment, out in the bush. Do you come home with the slight American twang and lose it really quickly? No, no you just don't no. get it. Even now, after all this time, I, I still most days, you know, get, get blank looks or people say to me, oh, yeah, you know, enjoy your holiday. I'm just like, yep, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, getting back to your musical career, I mean, one of the questions I do sometimes ask people is how they got into music and if their family's involved, but obviously your parents are a duo and they've just released a new album. Yeah, that's right. Yep, my mum and dad have been playing music since they were teenagers together. So they're, uh, yeah, they're still going strong. They just did their third album which is awesome you know i uh i think it's great i love it you know i'll uh i'll have a listen to it and kind of sit back and it's it's kind of surreal for me as well mm. so my um yeah my whole family is very musical I have, I have a sister as well and she's a music teacher you know she's very like theory based and you know knows all the ins and outs of music and all that whereas i'm just more to put me on a drum kit and let me go that's my style i would never complain about that because I think you're one of the best drummers I've heard, actually. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I can understand how you've done so well over in America, but you started the band Evolved yourself, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. After school, I left town here, you know, where I grew up, and I moved to the Gold Coast, and I played in a couple of cover bands just to uh, try and get involved in the scene, I guess, and try and get to know people. And, uh, yeah, then started Devolved and... You know, that all took off fairly quickly and, yeah, I guess that that got my career going. Yeah, and what was it like to actually be a boy from the Queensland bush basically going to America and then actually being so accepted and that by people in Um, such big bands? I mean, it was exciting, but it was very daunting at the same time. You know, long story short, the way it happened was we we devolved to it uh, with Fear Factory. You know, like, uh, as I said, you know, I've been over there 13 years, so it was a number of years ago now. And at the end of the tour, Dino, the guitarist, contacted me and said, you know, I want to do a new band. I want you to fly over here. I'll, I'll get you over here and come stay with me and, uh, you know, we'll do this. And I was, I mean, I saw it as my opportunity to, I guess, kind of get out of Australia and, you know, go and do something, you know, in a larger market, you know, somewhere. I just saw it as a stepping stone, I guess. Hmm. So off I went, you know, I really didn't even think about it. I packed my bag and I was on a flight out a few days later and I never really moved back here from that, you know. Hmm. I guess things just happened quickly. I I really had no expectations. I didn't know what was going to happen. But Hmm. once I got over there and I got involved in the scene and got to know the people and all that, I mean, uh, that was just the place for me. You know, I I loved it. I was like, you know, I, I can't do the things that I could potentially do Uh, in Australia, you know, so, yeah. Yeah. What I'm seeing actually from doing a lot of interviews and that is that it seems Australian musicians can do really well for themselves in America, but like it's more difficult for a whole band to go over there and do well than it is for a good musician to go over there and do well. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, well, it's hard to find a group of people who are all of, you know, the same mindset as far as being comfortable packing up your life and moving to the other side of the world and starting again. Because mm. you know, even with Devolve, you know, we had done quite well here in Australia and, you know, we're accepted here. We went over, well, you know, I went over there and then started doing the Devolve thing there. And it really was a matter of uh, kind of sitting back and saying to myself, okay, well, just starting completely from scratch again. You know, and that's that's not an easy thing to do. I think people expect to be able to just, for a band to just, 
pack up and go somewhere and just continue on where you left off, you know, and just have that fan base already. Mm. And that is certainly not the case. You know, you have to uh, you have to completely start over. You know, not only that, I mean, you're out of your element, you're away from family and friends, you know. I mean, some people can deal with it a lot easier than others. You know, other people just not at all. Mm. So, yeah, you're right. Individually, if that's for you and that's what you want to do, then I think it's going to be a whole lot easier rather than trying to find a group who can do it together, you know. Yeah, but I think the um, starting again and that is good because, I mean, the whole thing about being in a band, it doesn't matter how famous you are, you're always chasing something, aren't you? Yeah, that's true. Exactly. You're right. I mean, even when the profile gets to a certain point where other people may look at it and be like, wow, you know, you guys are doing really good and this and this and this. It's like, well, yeah, you know, and that's great. It's good to recognize that. But there's always a next step, always. I mean, Mm. I know for me personally, I would never be content, you know, and at this point, it's not even about that. You know, it's not about chasing the dream and, you know, being some huge celebrity and all this stuff. I mean, that it, that's not why I'm in it. It's never been why I'm in it. It's just been about being able to, I guess, um, go and, and play as many places as I can and, and just continue to do the music that I want to do as a career and for a living. Hmm. Yeah, I guess people are in it for different reasons, but I would look back now and and kind of be amazed as to uh, how long I've got to do this and, and what I've got out of it and all the things I've got to do. You know, I'd be pretty content. But, uh, you know, I always want to keep going, that's for sure. Yeah, and you were actually one of the ones who started Devil You Know as well. Mm-hmm. And then you went and found Howard Jones to do the lyrics and that. But you wrote the lyrics in Devolved as well. Did you write the lyrics for the first Devil You Know album? or No, no. Uh, myself and Francesco got to know each other just um, from playing in our other respective bands in Los Angeles. He lives there as well. Yeah, so we just got to be buddies just through the the local scene there. And then we started hanging out and we were like, you know, we should write some music. So we did and it was purely just for fun. There was absolutely no intent to be a band whatsoever. And, um, you know, we just kept writing and writing and I guess at some point we were like, you know, this stuff's pretty cool, you know, it's different and we kind of like it. It would be interesting to hear vocals on this, you know. And just through industry friends, I started talking with Jonesy and eventually he said to me on the phone one day, you know what, man, I'm going to come out to LA. Let's uh, let's throw some demos together and let's see how this thing sounds. And even then it was just for fun, you know, just to hang out. And uh, once we did that and some industry people heard about it and got hold of it, then, you know, everything changed. <laughs> yeah. And here we are. <laughs> And you're not, like, you, you've hit it, like, running, too, because you released your debut album, The Beauty of Destruction, last year, and now you're releasing your new album, yeah. They Bleed Red, a year later. Was that, like, oh, yeah, you, the inspiration stop. of having the band together now that made you write another one so quickly? Well, we, we had some downtime at the end of last year, and rather than, uh, you know, I guess everyone kind of all going our separate ways and just completely having time away from music. Francesca and I just continued to write. And, you know, it all came together really quickly. We were really happy with the new material. So we said to the record label, you know, how about we get in the studio early in the year and we knock this thing out, then we get back on the road and we'll have two albums to work with. And they heard the stuff and they were all for it. So, um, you know, I, I love the, uh, the fact that we can put out albums so close together and if we had been out on tour non-stop, then it wouldn't have been possible. But it was really just because we had that bit of time off. And like I say, rather than sit around, I'd rather utilise that time and keep busy and knock out a bunch more songs. And, you know, we're, we're really happy with the way it turned out. And I think, you know, it, it, you have to keep that momentum going. Hmm. So these days, you know, people want new music quicker as well. You know, they want to hear new stuff. So, yeah, I'm super stoked we got it done. And now I just can't wait to get it out and play this stuff live. Well, it sounds to me like at least the four of you that are currently in the band have, you know, found something together that, you know, the project that you are all excited to work on. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm very excited you know, to be a part of it. And the other, you know, the three other dudes are just such awesome dudes. You know, we're super good mates. And, uh, you know, we're, we've toured so much now just over those few years that we're all really comfortable on stage together and we have a lot of fun. And, you know, it's just, it's really good. You know, it's it's really 
really uh, positive and super super cool. So yeah, you know, we're just we're just enjoying the ride. Mm. So it's it's fun. Yeah, and speaking of playing together on stage, you came to Soundwave 2014, and now you're coming back to the 2016 Soundwave. Yep, and uh, 2014 that was the first tour that we did as Devil, you know, and they were they were the very first shows that we played. So uh, you know, in two years from from walking out on stage, where no one knows who the hell the band is, and I think at that time we had one demo song that had just been put online, and now. Yeah, in two years, you know, we get to come back and we've got two full albums and obviously the profile of the band has completely changed, so it's it's going to be a different dynamic, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, it's going to be cool. And a lot more people are going to know who Devil You Know are this time. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Even if there's a handful, that'll be more than the first time, I'd say. <laughs> I'm sure people just saw the name and just had no idea. I mean, I could tell when we walked out on stage uh, each night to play, People were looking like, oh shit, you know, that's such and such from that band and that's the guy from that band. And they, you know, they, they, but they had no idea collectively who who the band was, you know, mm. or what they were hearing. So, um, I mean, the, the, the response was really cool. And the good thing was, you know, uh, there we really didn't feel pressured whatsoever because we had nothing to lose. Mm. You know, we just got to walk out there and rip through the songs and, you know, even for us it was more of a practice run than anything. But, uh, you know, it's kind of cool, I guess, to be able to have a practice run playing the Soundwave Festival because not many bands get to uh, get to say that, I guess. But this, this second time around is going to be awesome, you know. It's going to be very different and, uh, you know, people are going to be familiar with the band now, so I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and you've got the album now, they bleed red, and that's due for release on the sixth of November. But you are about to release the second single off the album. Yeah, the music video comes out. I think it may be October. If, yeah. Yep. So that'll be the the first official single, I guess. Yeah. No, I can't wait. You know, I just I just want people to hear the record. I won't ask how hard work making the video was because I've seen the photos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll wait till you see the video. <laughs> I look no, forward to it. Not hard work at all. Let me tell you that. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a good time. We had just finished um, the last tour that we did through the US, and the day after the last show in Los Angeles, we we went to a, a strip club up in Hollywood, and um, we basically stayed there all night, and we partied and hung out, and uh, you know, pretty much they videoed it. So we. It was all pretty much what you see is, is the way it was. So it was, yeah, it was fun. Awesome. And getting back to you coming to Soundwave, when you did come last time, you were a five-piece and you are now a four-piece. Are you going to stay a four-piece? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything was very amicable and, um, you know, left on good terms with Roy, the other guitar player. But, uh, you know, it just wasn't really necessary. And, you know, these days as well, touring, it's, uh, you know, less people it's you know it's easier too so, i mean you know if it was absolutely essential to have that second guitar then obviously we still would and he was the right guy for it but we just didn't need it to uh to be able to do the shows and and do what we needed to do on stage so hmm. now, like i said it, it, it wasn't a bitter thing or a personal thing you know not at all i mean you know we love roy great dude but you know it was just a decision we had to make uh i guess for the band to, to move forward yeah and with the album I'm just looking, you've got three bonus tracks. Is that only for the pre-order? Uh, no, no, I think that's for the, like, maybe the, the Digipack version or, you know, there'll probably be two different versions of, of the album. I'm terrible with all this stuff, all the specifics. Hmm. But, I mean, yeah, anyone will be able to get that, anyone. Is yeah. I Have the Tiger, that's a cover track that's a bonus? Yeah, uh, yeah. I was just going to say I would definitely suggest it because everyone needs to hear Eye of the Tiger because it's probably my favourite track that we did on the whole record. <laughs> I got the album from Nuclear Blast last night, but I didn't get the bonus tracks. Ah, uh, well, you've missed out. Well, I can say is what you've got there, it gets better. Right. <laughs> and people can actually go and pre-order the album They Bleed Red from Nuclear Blast. Yeah. 
yeah, I, I know pre-orders are, are available now, and I'm sure you can pre-order the uh, yeah the version that has the bonus tracks, you know, mm. which include the cover. But yeah, you know, that that was just one of those things. We we were just messing around in the studio, just joking basically, and you know. Uh, we were kind of having a laugh and we decided, yeah, let's just throw this together and see what we think. And we did and uh, we thought, oh, yeah, this could actually work. So we ended up knocking it out and it's on there. And I mean, I think it actually came out really, really cool. So you know, mm. we'll, we'll see. Well, I hope I can hear it sooner rather than later. <laughs> well, you will. Sure, you will. I know, I know there's already a lot of people who've said to me they they're looking forward to checking that out. Yeah, and I will tell people also they can find you at facebook.com forward slash devil you know official. You are coming to Soundwave 2016 and the tickets for that are on sale now. And you've got the single, the video and single The Way We Die coming out on the 5th of October and the album They Bleed Red on the 6th of November. And like Perfect. I've heard the album, it is a really good album. I'm just like now it's always the one you don't get that you want, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I want. I want to hear those bonus tracks. Well, I think it's worth the wait. So hang in there, and um, yeah, it'll be worth it when when you get your hands on it. Yeah, and I think the way we die was actually a great choice for a single too. I'm looking forward to that oh, one. Oh, awesome! Coming out, yeah. yeah you know, it's uh, it's it's definitely got the very anthemic kind of a chorus, and you know, it's a little different for us as well. It's. You know, it's, but it's a catchy tune, and I think it's one of those ones, yeah, you, you kind of can't get it out of your head, and it has a cool groove to it. I mean, that will surely be a song that we're going to be playing live for quite a long time, and uh, I think live it's going to go over great. I can't wait to do it. Yeah, and I can't wait to see you at Soundwave this time, 2016. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, make sure you come say day and uh, hang out, and you know, we'll get up and uh, we'll put on a put on a rock show for you. Awesome. Sounds like a lot of fun and I'll be able to check out that drumming style. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, God, yeah, don't throw me off my game. Now I feel like I'm, I'm being watched. <laughs> <laughs> You're always being watched. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'd love to keep talking to you, but I'm nearly 10 minutes over and I know I'm going to get in yeah, trouble. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've already had another call coming in off this, but it's all right. I'm sure they'll, they'll call back in just a moment. Yes. <laughs> yep, it, I better keep running. It has been great. Thank you very much and enjoy your holiday too. Uh, you're very welcome, Kat. No worries. We'll catch up with you uh, at Soundwave. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Have a good Thanks. day. You too, mate. All Bye. Right. See ya. Bye.